I think Bowser's Fury is an amazing game. Being the first open world Mario game, I have to admit that I'm really liking the concept of just moving from level to level without having to enter a hub world or to select my level via a menu. Now this big world is fantastic and exploring it with Plessy is a delight. But there's a second way to explore this world though. When you grab a giant cat bell and turn into Super Saiyan Giant Mario, you're really big and you get to quickly explore this entire world, but from, you know, the big Kong vs Godzilla perspective. Once again, it's kinda neat to be able to see the levels you explored, but from another perspective. I realized that there is a third state in which the world can be explored. After you get your 50 cat shines and fight Giga Bowser for the final time and finally defeat him, well, he's gonna puke all over the world. But then, he's going to turn into Giant Bowser, and this is where the final chase sequence battle begins. Normally, you are meant to hop on Plessy and move as fast as you can to hit the Giga Bells back at Bowser's a couple of times to defeat him and win the game. But hear me out, what if we decided not to hop on Plessy and chase Bowser? What if we instead explored the whole map during the final fight? How would that go? Can the world actually be explored that way? Can we collect cat shines? Are we able to go everywhere? Well, this is what this video is gonna be all about. But just before we start exploring this big, big world, look at this graph. Ugh. Only 25% of people watching me right now are actually subscribed. Can you hit this big sub button real quick? It really helps me out. All right, thank you. Well, first off, as you can see, as soon as the battle starts, we are placed in a way where we instinctively head toward Plessy and start the fight. But instead of, you know, following the path, let's just try exploring, I don't know, Scamper Shores maybe? Well, it works, yeah, you can actually move freely around the map during the final fight, and that's pretty cool. But let's see if there are differences now that the world is in that very scary final boss fight state. First off, what I noticed is that there are no enemies to be found anywhere. Scamper Shores is usually filled with conch doors, piranha plants, cats and other hazards, but not this time. I'm not gonna lie, the world feels kind of empty when no one is around. Obviously, the big Giga Bells are all gone from that world, because, well, you know, Bowser has taken them hostage during the cutscene. I visited Pounce Bounce Isle next, and just like Scamper Shores, there are no enemies anywhere. I also noticed that there are usually crates that we have to destroy while making our way up, but these crates are also nowhere to be found, which is kind of funny. What happened to those? Did they just vanish? I don't know. All of those cat gears that we can use to get cat shines are all still there. The blue and red platforms that flip every time you jump, they work correctly in Fort Flaptrap. I also noticed that the invisible block that's normally over there with a star is not there anymore. In fact, there are no more question mark blocks anywhere in this world. But for some reason, those bricks down there on Fort Flaptrap, well, they're still there. Huh, interesting. I hopped on Plessy next, but that was only to cross the sea and reach Slipskate Slope. And you can instantly notice that the clear pipe to get up there, well, it works fine. The moving treadmills and spike walls are also there, but the ice skate shoe that we normally hop in to explore the world is nowhere to be found, which makes the exploration of this world a little bit slower. Before I got all of my cat shines and defeated Bowser, I made sure not to fight Boom Boom the Mad Lad to see if he would appear if I went into the Claw Swipe Colosseum during the final boss. But as you can see, well, even Boom Boom decided not to show up at all. Oh, I should also say that all of the cat shards are also missing from the map. In fact, all of the cat shines are also missing. One thing that isn't missing are the invisible blue walls from Trickety Tower. Yup, this annoying world still works perfectly fine. And that's a bummer considering I really dislike that stage. As you can see, the green pipe is still there. So I wonder if it still worked fine. So after making my way up the invisible platforms, I reached it. And well, yeah, it works. It's kind of useless in that state, but yeah, it works. <laughs> 
My next stop was one of my favorite levels in the game, Crisp Climb Castle. And I have to admit that this one was a bit of a pain in the butt to navigate. Normally, you're meant to grab some of those propeller boxes and hop on the wooden platforms that circle this big tower to make your way up there. But during the final fight, there are no propeller boxes and no wooden platforms. Oof, okay. Uh, climbing up using Cat Mario just doesn't work, even using the extended wall climb glitch. But thankfully, I managed to find a way to get up there using my boy Junior. As you climb up the tower, when you're about to slide down the wall, use the pointer to bring Junior under you, and if done correctly, he's going to give you a little boost, and that will be just enough to get up there. As you can see, the wooden platforms from the next tower are still all there, but reaching them without a propeller box isn't easy. I actually had to use a glitch from the original Super Mario 3D World game, the Ice Physics Crouching Glitch. For some reason, if you run and repeatedly crouch while on ice, Mario is going to build up some insane speed and this will be just enough to reach the second tower. But climbing that tower without the propeller box is also quite scary, and I almost fell down at many occasions. But thankfully, with a bit of luck and skill, you'll soon manage to get to the top of the tower and... Wow, what a view! Look how big Bowser is! You know, I had to take a picture while being up here. You never go there normally, it just looks amazing! Before exploring the remaining areas, I decided to hop on Plessy and see if the path behind the waterfall was still there during the end cutscene. And while it took me a while to find it, yes, it's still there! There are no more boost panels to help you go fast though, so it makes it slower. But hey, it's there! As I made my way up the big green boat and chased Bowser a little bit, I soon noticed that this big colored tower over there is actually the Pipe Path Tower. Whoa! I actually never noticed that this world still exists during the fight. As you can see, it's really empty now. There are no clear pipes at all. It's almost unrecognizable. And of course, you know me, I also tried to make my way on top of the tower, but I just wasn't able to, even with Junior's help. I soon noticed that there were still a couple of floating platforms around this tower. I used my girl Plessy to reach the second highest floating platform and then managed to climb on top of the tower. Nice. As you can see from up there, all of the green arrow platforms meant to get to Pipe Path Tower and Mount Magmeow are all gone, which is odd. <laughs> Being up here also made me notice that the game probably never intended anyone to get on top of this tower because there's a couple of visual glitches while moving up there. For example, you can see the water disappearing around the Gigabell's location and the metallic plates vanishing too. It's just a funny visual glitch I wanted to share. Obviously, we're not done with the tour yet, as we have to get to the wasteland to reach the next levels. Risky Whisker Island is up, and this island is still pretty much the same as it was before. Nothing new here, all of the donut platforms are still there. Mount Magmeow also looks the same, although I have to say that with the orange sky, the lightning bolts and everything, it looks pretty dope. I wanted to make my way to the top of the mountain, but with no green arrow platforms, it's kind of difficult to do so. I did try to climb around the mountain, but I didn't manage to reach the top that way. Eventually, I decided to use Junior to bounce my way on the lava and into that clear pipe to get to the top. And I have to admit, I died way too many times trying, but eventually, yes, I did it. We can reach the top of the world. Heck, we can even reach the flying island and move in the sky. This is kind of fun, but there ain't much to do up there. We can go into Prince Bully's battle arena, but he's nowhere to be found. The clear pipes are all still there though, which is something I cannot say about the Pipe Maze Tower. Rolling Roller Isle is almost untouched, although now that all of the bombs, bricks and blocks are missing, it feels very empty. I jumped on the moving blocks and reached the top and there wasn't much to see, but uh, yay, we did it! <laughs> During my first tour of this world, I had 50 cat shines, meaning I didn't have the first step island unlocked. But I did try to make my way up there using Plessy and some tricky jumps, but for some reason, I just could never reach it. 
and after a couple of tries, I realized that there was an invisible wall preventing me from reaching the top. How annoying. I had to switch to my 100 catch shines game, defeat Fury Bowser again, and this time the black goop was gone and I was able to reach it. And uh, well, yeah, this island is already bare enough when playing it normally, so you bet there's not much to see this time around. I was happy to see that the little camp that Toadette and the gang built was still there, although the Toad Brigade is nowhere to be found. While I had 100 shines, I also explored the map and realized that all of the clear pipes shooting you in the sky to get to some cat shines are gone, which is kinda sad. Some areas where we normally hop into cloud cannons to go in the sky are still there, but the cloud cannon is missing, so we cannot get up there. All of the graffitis where Junior can spawn a bar up are all gone during the final boss fight, and a lot of areas that normally contain black goop are now completely free of it. Yeah, that concludes our tour of the world during the final bus. And as you can see, it's actually quite different in that state, and I think it was worth taking the time to explore and snap some cool pictures while being there. I just love going into places games don't intend you to go to and discover the hidden details and stuff left there. Thanks a lot for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, well, smash like, hit the bell, and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to see more Bowser Fury videos, well, tap the cards on screen right now. And as for me, well, I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye!